What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is our final week of the regular season, week nine of the Rundall division, if you can believe it or not. And let's take a look at the standings before we jump into these matches. First of all, we have Surf Taco, coach of Reagan against the Machine, season one champion with a perfect 8-0 record, series record anyway. He's only dropped one single game to Alcor of Diminishing Returns. He has already clinched the number one seed, so regardless of what happens in his match, he will be the number one going into the playoffs. Number two, Ready Player Will, coach of the Pandas. Similar story, the only series loss is to that first place team, Surf Taco, and he has clinched second place already. Coppola of Holy Divers, we're following a little theme or a trend here, as he is third place, automatically guaranteed no matter what. So those first three teams, that is pretty much all we know after that. There is a ton of stuff up in the air in terms of what is going to happen. So as I take my face off the screen real quick, I'm going to show you the games. We have Surf Taco vs. Iceheart, Ready Player Willow vs. Koryu, Coppola vs. Dawn, Catra vs. Thunder Mage, and Alcor vs. Jesus. Um, it is not probably all, all going to be in that order. I'll probably piece them together in some order later. But regardless, we have Catra of Sandrock, Dawn of Primordial Inquisition, and Thunder Mage of Shadow Wizard Money Gang with 12 points. Alcor of Diminishing Returns, Koryu of Seas, Jesus LB of the Straw Hats with 10. Those six teams all have a potential chance at making playoffs this week, believe it or not, from 4th through 9th. Two of these teams will make it. We know either Catra or Thunder Mage will make it because they play against each other, but the other four teams, who will be the last spot? We really don't know. We'll have to see. Iceheart of Stag Party looking to try and uh, rain on Surf Taco's undefeated streak parade, whatever. We'll see if she can pull it off, but it, regardless, should be a bunch of fun matches. Before we jump into those, though, just wanted to say thank you to the YouTube members. There are a ton of people out here that have supported the channel financially, my monetarily, however you want to say that. Thank you so much to all of these people. Um, seriously, it means the world to me that you guys do this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Without further ado, let's jump into the final week of matches for the Rundall Division. All right, guys, kicking off the final week of the regular season for Season 3, run all the vision here. We have none other than our Season 1 champ, Surf Taco. Show me your power coming out from his Kefka. He's undefeated in series record all throughout the season. Can he make it a perfect 9-0? If Sweetheart has anything to say about it, we will see. She's running a Jane and Rundall, Marguerite, and Little Leela composition. And it looks like Jane's going to get that agility up on the party. Magic up for himself. Keenblade comes out from the Whisper. As Marguerite should be able to finish up her Time Mage spell soon. This should be a fast cast from the Adelard. And that is the guard haste, just as we assumed. Kafka going to say, I just can't believe it. With the re-raise, if he dies, he will come back to life here. And obviously not a whole lot of bearing on the standings here, as Surf Taco has already locked up the number one seed. But can he do what only one team has ever done? Go undefeated through the regular season. We'll see. Adelard going to channel another fast cast here. Whisper going to go with Divine Shelter. This is a fantastic buff. Protect Shell, Regen, Healing Power. So many good things here. Jane's going to get got a turn here. Golden Mad Shot comes out 8,700 on the Kefka. Good Lord. That is a ton of damage here. The Fast Cast goes out onto the Kefka. Quicken comes out again. Does Jaden just kill this Kefka right here or at least his first life? I imagine he does. No, I'm sorry. He's going Golden Magic Shot on the Whisper. Unfortunate for Sweetheart. He's able to get in range of the tank here. Light of Judgment Plus comes out from the Kefka doing a lot of damage to Sweetheart's tank. And Protection Break coming out from the Whisperer. 1,400 damage is not really going to do it. Marguerite, I imagine, going to go for another quick in here. What does the timing look like? It is perfect timing coming out from Sweetheart. Jaden's going to go and then catch another quick in immediately. Drill Shot will take out the Whisperer, and he might just get a double kill right here. There is still a re-raise on Kefka, but this is looking very good for Sweetheart at the moment. Jaden's going to follow it up. Jamming Thrust into the back line. I am stunned by the fact that that he just did that. Actually, I think Kefka put hate on the other units. I think that's what just happened. I think that is why uh, they went for Adelard instead of Kefka, unless it's Bowtie Adelard. But regardless, quick turnaround. Adelard destroys the Jaden. Kefka destroys Little Leela. And all of a sudden, this looked like a fight that Sweetheart might, might win. And Surf Taco comes back with a vengeance and wins game one. Game number two here, and does Sweetheart have an answer here? And it looks like Alaya, Rundall, Lucia, and Marguerite. Interestingly enough, Marguerite's actually level 136 here. So maybe doing a bit of reincarnating on the Marguerite from Sweetheart's side. And Surf Taco is trying to win this game with the Dark Composition. Sephiroth, Whisper, 
and her sister Murmur. And we'll see here. March of the Dragon Strike Princess comes out from the Alaya, and she's ready to go deal some damage. What does Whisper have in store for us? Is it the Keen Blade? Yes, it is, just like game number one. And now she's going to walk over to the side here. Murmur going to go next, considering with that CT up, she basically hops the turn order here. And the Guard Haze comes out from Marguerite, so this is a very speedy Alaya. But Sephiroth with the Bale of Woe, Physical Magic Shield, AP Auto Restore, 11.3k health. A very healthy man here. The Fast Cast will catch on to the Whisper. She's going to Divine Shelter just like game one, and she's going to walk forward. And I imagine Murmur going to go with another Fast Cast onto Sephiroth here. Eli's going to get a chance to go next. How much damage is she going to do? This is going to be very telling to see if Sweetheart has a chance in this fight. Hail of Bullets is a ton of damage. 6398. That is very, very impressive. Is this another Quicken or is this a, another Haste? Rapid Fire from Lucia takes out the tank. And this missile damage from Sweetheart is looking very, very impressive. Aliyah going to go next. She has 56 AP. She's going to sharpshoot through the uh, Sephiroth. 3,000 damage is pretty impressive. And now my question is, is Sephiroth in range to kill anybody? Yes, he is. Octoslash comes out. Is this AoE, though, or is it only under one unit? Does it one shot? Oh, no. That is brutal to see. It kills the Lucia. It does not kill Alaya. I actually thought it killed her. It did not yet. So this is not over yet. If this quicken timing is here with the Marguerite, if Alaya can go, which she does, she goes and then catches a quicken here. Can she find a kill on a Sephiroth? She's actually going to hail the bullets on the backline murmur. That makes sense. Quicken coming out onto the Alaya again. She should be able to chain up with herself, find the kill on the murmur, but unfortunately, Sephiroth is the one you need to kill. Alaya does have reflex in her kit. Does she manage to pull one here? She does not. The Hell's Gate and Sephiroth is inevitable. And as impressive as hell of a season we have ever seen. Surf Taco... Good lord, man. Undefeated throughout the season. Has won every single series, only dropping one single game. Eight out of his nine series were two-game series. Alcor being the only player in our entire league to take a game from him. Honestly, just incredibly impressive. Regardless of what happens in the playoffs, which I think he has an incredible chance at going far into, this season was just ridiculously impressive and to sweetheart thank you so much for playing all season there were so many close calls and so many opportunities that i thought she might end up winning one of those series but it just wasn't meant to be unfortunately but thank you so much for participating awesome series let's check out the next one Game number one of Thunder Mage's Shadow Wizard Money Gang versus Catra Sandrock in this series is very, very big. It's for all the marbles. The winner of this series makes the playoffs. The loser, very likely, going to miss. Divine Sacrament comes out from Thunder Mage's Sodaly, paired up alongside the Queen in the Blade as the momentum. King Bradley TMR comes out from the Noctis, a very rare sighting. That hasted up Earth Unit. We haven't seen him in a long time, but probably a smart bring considering he's facing off against somebody named Thunder Mage. Maruka Kaja comes out from the Queen, the AoE area re resistance up buff with reawakening coming up from stern which means he's going to come back to life if he dies along with some ct up at that moment ice vitalization comes out from the blade his hate is down can be pretty massive especially when you were not running a tank even though Sodaly can give ta uh, hate to one of his other units the keen blade comes out from balo and power the true king from the noctis so now he has his follow-up attack online immortal dogma coming out onto the queen and now all of a sudden there is a tank there is a unit with some hate and she says hey i hate stern 2300 damage not a whole lot honestly i imagine a decent amount of aoe resist on that stern here as the bar blizzard of vitalizer comes out giving a bunch of stats to the other units We'll see. Skyhammer comes out from Noctis. 2970 tanked pretty well. And honestly, the follow-up attack not doing that much. Queen, even with the elemental disadvantage, doing quite well to resist that damage. But the infinite light, the mega lightsaber coming out from Stern. Massive damage onto the Valade. He's going to drop immediately. Queen barely hangs on, but Balo's going to follow up. Can he find a kill? No, he cannot. He does not have a whole lot of range. But Noctis, with that haste, is now finally faded away. But it doesn't matter. He's out fast enough to find a first kill onto Queen. We'll proc the re-raise. She comes back to life. 
and it is Sadali's turn to go. What does he have? Rush Not Thy Fate is a lot of damage on the party. One shot Synoctus, almost kills Balo, chunks out the Stern, and actually Queen is going to go next because of the affinity change. She lapped Stern here. She gets the first kill on Balo, but this is not your regular ordinary Balo. This is Super 140 Balo with a brand new amazing re-raise ability. The Aegis Crush comes out from Stern. Killing the first life of the leader of the church, Sadali. Balo is up next. Can he find a kill? Yes, he can. The standard attack is going to take out Queen. And unless Sadali can pull off some crazy stuff going on here, this is likely over in game one. It's a ton of damage on a Balo. But Stern is 29 AP, and he doesn't need any of it to slay the leader of the church. That is a game one victory for Catra of Sandrock. Heading into game two here, and Thunder Mage needs to win this game to keep his playoff hopes alive. With at least one game win, he has a chance at the playoffs, depending on what the other teams do. But if he sits with no wins, he will be out of it regardless here. Catra, uh, the Violet is going to go with the AoE buff as Auto is again turned on, just like game number one from the Thunder Mage. And Catra can smell the playoffs. He needs one game win to try and seal that for himself as the reawakening comes out from Stern. And this is a team we saw a lot from Catra very early on in the season. He's been shaking things up a little more as of late, but the leaping assault from Surge as actually misses is dodged by the Stern. I imagine being brought with Violet, there is actually probably some evasion set up on Catra's team here. But here comes the Violet. Displacer is 7,600 damage. Drops the accuracy as well, which means Surge's chance to hit is probably quite low. And let me tell you, his chance to hit is zero when he is in the grave. Here comes Sadali with the Immortal Dogma. And for Thunder Mage to have a chance here, Sadali's going to have to put up a ton of damage and maybe Lightning as well. Life, Sightning to, Life Siphon 2, excuse me, does quite a bit to the Stern, but gets completely dodged by the Violet. As she says, allow me, not a whole lot of damage, but starting to chunk through that barrier that is on the Lightning at the moment. I believe she only has one hit left of it. 100 Edges is going to chain through, and that is a massive Light Slash Chain. Removes the re-raise as well. And now Sadali is in a 1v3, and in order to pull this off, you would have to do so much damage, and the reflex is not going to help his cause. Catra on the brink of the playoffs here. Dazzle us, Cendrillion comes out from the Violet. Sadali, what do you have up your sleeve? Can you find a massive limit break onto somebody to turn this fight around? He doesn't get the counter heal. His life bar is almost done here. Here he comes with the channeled spell. How much damage can he get done? Rush Not Thy Fate does a ton to Baylow, but again, the accuracy is not there for these evasion units. Violet is going to go Razor's Edge. That gets the first kill on Asadali. He is going to be brought back due to the re-raise, but Stern is going to seal the deal here, killing Sadali, killing Thunder Mage's chance at playoffs, but claiming himself a spot in the top five for the Rundall division. Absolutely awesome series. GG to both players who fought very well all season, but ultimately congratulations to Catra of Sandrock for keeping his playoff hopes alive and keeping his season going. GG. Game number one of the Pandas versus Seas. Ready Player Will versus Corey 87 It looks like Ready Player Will bringing an old reliable team. Double Fire Evasion. Indomitable Spirit coming up from the Pissarro alongside the Sweetheart Aldera with Phoebe to back up with Haste and Quickens as Subterfuge comes out from the Sweetheart Aldera, giving Evasion up and also some hate down for herself to try and keep her safe. Spell of Fortification coming out from the Halloween Lucia here. A huge massive Health Shield might be able to keep her alive for a bit against these physical damage dealers. Agri is going to tank up, walk forward as Heart of Flutter coming up from Dario. This is actually almost a double tank build from Koryu, interestingly enough. Hopefully Halloween Lucia going to be able to do enough damage from the back here. As Sentinel comes out from Agri, she's going to walk forward. She is not in range to deal any sort of damage or statuses, or she doesn't have the accuracy. Which one is it? Not entirely sure. Draining Seal, though, is going to go onto the Phoebe. Interestingly enough, is Phoebe running a bow tie or something like that? Or is it just that he can't hit these other two units? We'll see. Strike of Ruin, though, tanked up fairly well here. As the Letter Bomb of Love comes out from Sweetheart Eldira, this is a massive CT changer. It's basically like a Keen Blade in an attack all at the same time. And she just decimates the Agrius. The Panda's out to an early 3-2 lead at the moment. Phoebe's going to go with another Guard Haste. So both of these Fire Evasion units are hasted up and sped up and ready to go. Strike of Ruin comes out for 3,400 damage damage onto the Dario, and he is just below half health at this moment. Toxic Assault is a good chunk of damage and also poisons him, which means he is likely to die on the very next turn unless he can heal up via a Draining Seal. Toad's Curse, though, the guaranteed hit coming out from the Lucia. 
dealing over 6,000 damage to Pissarro is pretty respectable. Pissarro actually goes for an attack on the Halloween Lucia, a little known mechanic here, guys. He actually did not get AP from that because he did not deal damage. So that is very, very interesting. The Draining Seal goes on the Pissarro, procs the Courage, but doesn't heal him up enough to survive through the poison. And the slow lands from Sweetheart Odira, and now all of a sudden this Lucia is very, very slow. But these two evasion units do not have any AP, and they do not have a way to break the shield until they break through it. This physical health shield is massive considering it's just standard attacks. Finally, Pissarro does get some AP here. Sweetheart Odira should be able to do the same thing with a four slash chain coming out, but sudden end from Halloween Lucia. Takes out the Phoebe, gets dodged by the Pissarro though, and even though she gets some CT up, I don't think it's going to be enough. There's a hasted fire evasion unit with a slow caster here, and this should be all but over in game one. Ready player will of the pandas take the game one victory. Or U87 backs against the wall, running the exact same team comp as game one into the same team comp coming out from Ready Player Will as well. And for Koryu to make the playoffs needs to not only win this game, but also win another and have some things go their way. We'll see if it works out. Looks like pretty much the exact same turn rotation coming out from the pandas here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Spell fortification coming out from Halloween Lucia. And the only thing I will say is the positioning looks a little different from Koryu. The Keen Blade coming out from Agris to get that CT up. And now Dario is way out in front as where the Agris is a little bit in the back. I think in order for Koryu you to win Agris is gonna have to do something because she basically did nothing last fight can she find a critical status effect or something like that or at least by enough time for the Halloween Lucia the set the pace TMR comes out Addison Ray to try and dispel any sort of haste and the regen on multiple units trying to keep them nice and healthy draining seal comes out from the Dario Pissarro is going to counter with about 3,000 damage of his own and here comes sweetheart Odira fatal bind immobilizes and drops the agility on the Dario. A little less than 3k on that hit. We'll have to see here. Discontinuum plus. There's just a massive chain started here for Ready Player Will's team. And there's another Quicken, which means Pissarro is going to be able to hit again, but it's another AP Break Lance. Massive fire chain. Four hits in a row taking out the Dario. He's pretty low on AP at the moment, though. As Unhappy Ending comes out from the Halloween Lucia, Agris, can you find the accuracy? Can you find the damage? Candescent Hue, I don't know if this is a guaranteed hit or not. Does this land? Yes, it does. That makes me think it's probably a guaranteed hit, but maybe the accuracy is just really, really well built on Agrius. We'll see. As the Letter Bomb of Love comes out from Sweetheart Eldira, I expect this to do a lot of damage. Also, massive CT exchange, 6,400, dropping Agrius's and raising Eldira's. But here's the problem for Ready Player Will. Sweetheart Eldira only has 12 AP at the moment. Can she get anything done here? She's just going to back up and do Subterfuge, which is actually very good for his team, I think as attritional protection comes out from the Lucia, who has plenty of AP for herself. Sentinel coming out from the Agris. Evasion down. Obviously, she's not the evasion unit, though, so that doesn't matter a whole lot. Tiger Maw coming out for 4,200. Agris with the regen does keep herself healthy enough to live that hit. Ildira's going to have to burn another attack. Can she get in range to standard attack? No, she can't. There is a dead body in her way, which means she has to waste AP. So now it is Halloween Lucia versus two but again, Ildira doesn't have a lot of AP. She's in a better position this time than she was last game. She Toads curses Phoebe, and that is a dead frog. And now here we go in a 1v1. Constricting Cleave, though, again lands the slow. That is such a crippling status effect, and that might be Ready Player Will's window into winning this game. Still not able to accrue any AP. I imagine the next attack probably will finally break through the shield. Unhappy Ending does a ton of damage. Does she get another opportunity to attack, though? How big is this slow? Ildira is going to lap. She's going to go again. 24 AP. Five turns left. Does Halloween Lucia get to act, though? Yes, she does with three actions. If she has a guaranteed hit, which she does, the game is over. And that is a game two victory for Koryu and Seas. By the hair on their chinny chin chin, Koryu87 pulls out the game two victory. It's 1-1 in this series. Trying to keep their playoffs up so alive. Ready Player Will sticking with the same team, but some different TMRs coming out. Midsummer Refreshment. That is the Summer Kill Fate TMR on Sweetheart Ladira, giving herself a shell bonus here. 
as Koryu87 switches up their team in the final game. This is a Severo Amnilus Velus team. Hour of Restoration comes up, so all three units have a heal back at the moment, and we've seen this team many times from Koryu. Stars of Swiftness will come up from the Velus, so double haste it up units, and now is Severo in range to do damage, or is he going for his 120 ability? He is in range to do damage. Watercur Perpetuator misses, though, and Bravery Down apparently does not get applied if he misses. Some skills do still do that, but either she has debuff resistance or that does not still go through. Not entirely sure how that goes. The advent misses as well. The spirit down is nice, but man, at some point you have to start doing damage and both of these attacks missed, unfortunately. I know Ready Player Will's team is probably pretty much max evasion as you can get. And it just doesn't look like the accuracy might be here. The Letter Bomb of Love comes out, which means massive CT down on the other two units. Up for Ildira as well. Discontinuum does a good chunk. And with all that healing power down, the heal back for Koryu does so little for his Amnilus. Velas, can he heal enough with the healing power down? Yes, he can, as his healing power was not reduced. Tiger Maw comes out from the Ildira. That is enough to take out the Severo here, even with the elemental disadvantage. But Phoebe is just so impressive with her haste and quickens. Amnilus, can you find some damage here do you have the accuracy or do you have the guaranteed hit and will you get an opportunity as the Ildira catches the quicken in time 25 AP toxic assault is not enough to kill but the poison will take her out in the next turn unless Velus's heal goes off first oh my god I take it back law of geo absorption just absolutely wrecked both fire units and ready player will might end up still losing this AP break lance does a ton of damage Amnilus is poisoned is she going to die to this poison before the spell goes off? Oh my gosh. Yes, she is. You've got to be kidding me. The Icebreaker is going to come out from Velus. This is a guaranteed hit, but Pissarro has courage, which means he needs to find one more hit to be able to win this game. Does Velus have the accuracy? He is not a super accurate unit. Guard haste onto the Pissarro, and now is Fire vs. Ice. One health on Fire vs. Ice. AP Break Lance not doing as much damage as I would have expected, to be honest. Velus is he's going to heal himself, though. Yes, he is. Snow healing. And I just don't know if he's going to get an opportunity to deal damage to this one health target. AP Break Lance again. Cold Comfort, the reaction, but it misses. And this is kind of what I was talking about. I don't think the accuracy is there. He needs another guaranteed hit, but he's only got one use of his Limit Break. Pissarro going to standard attack. Cold Comfort procs again, but misses again. Velus, do you have anything? He's going to go for Knight's Blessing. And at some point, 17 actions left. Is there any way that he could somehow kill Phoebe and stall this game out long enough? Because I don't know if he has the accuracy to kill. He should attack here. Who does he go for, though? It's Sub-Zero onto the Phoebe. That is a one-shot. Koryu needs to last 12 turns because I don't think he can do a damage. Falcon Slash is a decent amount. Does Velus have any heals left? He's healed, I think, like three or four times already. He's already used Mashiri TMR. He might not have any heals left. There's eight actions left. What does he go for? He's channeling a spell. This could be a heal. No, it is Ice Blessing. Oh my gosh, there's seven actions left. He's still alive. He has more health, but Pissarro's going to get a turn. Velus, can you do any damage? He can't. He physically cannot hit the Pissarro, and with four actions left, that is how that series is going to end. Ready Player Will's Pandas come out on top with the evasion strategy. That was an amazing game three. Hats off to both players. Congratulations, Ready Player Will, and I'm sorry to core you that they will not be making the playoffs, but thank you so much for playing this season. It was a joy to watch. Let's check out the next series. Game one of Dawn's Primordial Inquisition versus Coppola's Holy Divers. And heading into this series here, if Dawn wins this series, he will clinch himself the final playoff spot. If he gets one point, he has a chance. If he gets zero, he is out. So we will have to see how this goes here. Coppola with the Mariel, Starlight Elena, and Nivlu here. Heart of Flutter coming out from the Mariel to try and get that movement up and unit attack resist as well. Dawn running a very interesting composition here with Snow, Naya, and Kilfay. All right, we have seen very little Kilfay all season here as the Ravage comes out from the Snow, dealing just a little bit of chip damage here. And the Aurora of Blessings tech, a pretty smart option coming up from Dawn here considering there's a lot of light power on Coppola's roster. Starlight Elena is one of those units with a ton of light power. Prismatish Punishment comes out prismatic excuse me there should be a massive light slash chain but honestly tanked quite well 
by the snow. It does drop his agility. Dispel spread going to come out from the Nivlu here. Just a little bit of damage, though. Not a whole lot. Going to dispel any sort of buffs on everybody. And honestly, Mariel doing the most damage of any unit up to this point. Obviously getting that boost of the Light Slash Chain started by Elena. Kilfe going to get an opportunity to deal some damage to damage here. Excuse me. Energy Buster hitting multiple units. This is a guaranteed hit, which could be pretty huge against this evasion team that Gop was bringing. Reprieve comes out from the snow. He's just going to put Courage on himself, but he's standing still, which means Kilfe is in range of the AoE. Light Shell Bade the World coming out, but again, tanks pretty well. Mind Crusher gets the healer down, though. It is now a 2v3 in Coppola's favor, and he's looking like he is in very good position in this game one fight. Slow Shot is going to come out, drop that agility again for the snow. Basically just refreshing. Crystal Shine Bright is a good chunk of damage. Kilfe, can she get anything done before she perishes here? Energy Buster is going to find the double kill. The Courage Courage is not there for Starlight Elena, and hold on a second, Dawn might just pull this off. This is Mariel versus Snow in game one here, 29 AP, Smite 2 comes out for 2654, and which tank is going to win it? Banishka Blade does 1700, Snow still has Courage, but he has way less health. And the, oh my gosh, he can't get in range to deal a standard attack because of the barrel and the dead body, so he heals himself, and that's actually beneficial to him. You've got to be kidding me. That barrel is Dawn's best friend right now. Oh my god. This dead kill fay also being the MVP. This dead kill fay is making Snow win this fight. Because he physically cannot get in range to deal damage. Now he finally has the AP after he's healed himself up twice. The Spirit Breaker does a chunk of damage. Mariel is going to standard attack. Revenge Revenger misses. Because there's enough evasion on this Mariel. Snow is going to punch her in the chest again. But he's barely getting any sort of AP. There's seven turns left. The Chicken Blade comes out dropping the Bravery. And I think Snow just wins this. 14 AP. Shifting Strike takes out the Mariel. And, um... If there's a most valuable dead body or most valuable barrel award, Kilfe and that barrel won it in this game for Dawn. If that is not there, I, I'm not so sure because I don't think he heals back up and I think Mariel just wins it. That was absolutely nuts. Congratulations on the game one victory for Dawn. Let's check out game two. Heading into game number two here, Coppola changing up Starlight Elena, Ramza, and Slime. We've seen Coppola put in a lot of work with this Slime before. Momentum comes out from Starlight Elena. King Bradley, TMR, she actually prioritizes this over her courage. I saw that Coppola had mentioned this in the Discord, as this is a evasion squad of Dawn's own here, coming with the Water Team, ready to engage, coming out from the Chunak, the guaranteed hit nullification coming out from Farm as well. As Shout Plus comes out from Ramza, getting Protect on the entire party, that's going to be pretty advantageous versus these physical damage dealers on the other side. And there is some Dark Odin synergy coming out from Dawn's team as well, with Double Water plus the Ice Tank of Nasha, as she is going to start walking into this fight. I've Tempered My Resolve comes out from Starlight Elena, who now has Courage online. Chunak's gonna go next, gonna stay ready to engage, just going to refresh this buff on himself and to the Nasha. And just a reminder here, Dawn has a potential chance at making this playoffs because of the game one victory, but if he were to win this game, he will clinch a playoff spot. Keen Blade coming out from Ramza, CT up, and he's gonna move to the side. And Zombie TMR coming out from the slime, so he now has re-raise. And if he wasn't a pesky enough healer, Zombie TMR just makes him really, really annoying to deal with. Prismatic Punishment comes out from the start of late Elena. How well does Nasha tank this? I believe it only hits her. Yes, it does. Honestly, did a fairly decent job. About 4,500 damage, if I'm counting that correctly. Does drop the agility, but Ramza finds a massive chain onto Nasha. Almost kills Chunak. Brings Nasha down to her courage, and Blade Bash does not find the status effect. The stun does not land. Lux Overflow coming out from Elena, and this is looking pretty good for Coppola at this moment. Slime completely untouched in the back, and these two light units are very healthy, but Fatal Pirouette from Chunak doing a good chunk of damage. Can farm chain up with this here? Can she find it? Hian comes out, kills the Ramza. This is now down to a 2v2 again. Slime should be able to find the heal onto Elena, though, and she should be able to turn around and kill this Chunak unless there is an evasion. She's going to go Iridescent Blade. She connects on all four hits. That is a massive amount of damage, and now Farm is in a 1v2 against Elena and Slime, and with Slime still having re-raise, this is going to be a massive uphill battle. Slime going to Hustle Dance plus one to just make sure that health bar on Elena is full. And she's got plenty of AP this moment. Crystal Shine Bright will go onto the farm. One shots her, no problem. And Coppola making a statement in game two brings it to a game three.
game number three here, guys. And Dawn, going back to the team from game number one, he said, hey, I actually won with this one. Let's bring it back. And Coppola bringing the game two team. So both teams that have won to this point are coming out in the final game here. Shout Plus coming out from the Rams. A Bravery up. Bonus. Protect as well. And here comes Kilfay. What is she going to channel here? I believe this is a barrier buff that she channels for herself. Aurora Blessings again coming out from the Nasha to try and protect from this light squad. A very, very smart option when facing against Coppola. Acceleradle coming out from the slime to get that agility up on everybody. And Snow with 31 AP is going to pop the Courage. Reprieve. Going to start walking forward. And there is no Courage removal on the other side. Shield of Staves, Shield of Staves comes out from Kilfay. Unit attack resist and a three hit barrier. And Elena does a little bit of damage to Snow, but honestly not as much as I expected. Ultima comes out from the Ramza. This is actually a magic attack rather than a physical attack. 3863 is pretty darn solid though as it removes buffs as well. But one thing about Snow is that he doesn't try to get more hate during the fight. He starts with 10, so he should still have six. At this point, he would drop to four. But it does not matter, because Starlight Elena brings him all the way down to Courage already and deals a very sizable amount of damage to the Kill Fae. Energy Blaster will connect. Is she below the threshold to catch a heal from this slime? Yes, she is. Hustle Dance plus one comes out, and that is going to be really, really tough to overcome for Dawn, unless Naya can find a massive heal right here, which it looks like she's going to be able to. Snow actually moves forward with the Demon Purger, and I don't think that's what you want from Dawn, because now the Kyrga is only going to land on the Snow. And I think there was healing power dropped at one point as well, which I didn't catch. The Star Snooper Nova comes out from Elena for 4K. Ramza will clean up the snow. And it looks like this is probably it for Dawn in game three here. Hustle Dance plus one comes out from the slime. And you just need so much damage to get this through this team. It's insane. Energy Blaster hits all three. Brings slime down to one health. Naya, does she go for a heal or does she go for a full life? I'm not sure which one she's channeling at this moment. But Starlight Elaine is going to go Star Supernova. And for Dawn's sake, hopefully it's a full life. But is it? I think it's probably a Kyrga. Shimmering Blade almost one-shots the Naya. She's going to get CT up. Looks like she's rocking that Wizard Rod here. It is a Kyrga. It will connect with herself, but that is it. Which means unless she can land a full life right here, which she is going to go for. What is the cast time? Slime going to heal up again. Starlight Elena might be able to take her out before this full life even goes off. 21 AP, Lux Overflow is enough to do it. And Coppola ends this season in very impressive fashion. Coming back from a game one kind of unfortunate loss due to the positioning of that the kill fate and the barrel. But convincingly winning game two and three. But heading into the final series, guys, this is now insane for the playoff picture. Um, I am going to look at my notes real quick to no make sure that I understand what it is going into the final series. Okay, guys, so I just checked my notes on the standings, and the final series that we have is Jesus LBL versus Alcor. Now, because of the way tiebreakers work and the standings and all that kind of stuff, Alcor, unfortunately, regardless of what happens, is out of the playoffs. And Don, even though he did not win this series, because he won one game, he's sitting at 13 points. If Jesus LBL beats Alcor, Jesus LBL will clinch the fifth playoff spot. If Alcor beats Jesus, Dawn will clinch the fifth playoff spot. So I wouldn't have it any other way. Heading into this final series, it is all on the line. Dawn is Alcor's biggest fan at the moment, and Jesus LBL, all he has to do is win it in. Who is going to win it? Let's check out the final series. Kicking off the final series of the Rundall regular season. This is for all the marbles. If Alcor wins, Dawn makes playoffs. If Jesus wins, he makes the playoffs. Boon of the Lion coming out from the Sylvie to get the AoE resist up on the party. Along with the Lucio popping Zizabels to get AP restoration. And Zazan is there to back them up. On Alcor's side, running Perrine. Queen Mashri as the Greater Domain of Water comes out from the Perrine. And Liarte is off on the side to try and deliver some status effects. It looks like Queen Mashri going to start channeling her re-raise here. What is Liarte going to go for? Um, a whole lot of nothing, actually. So I'm not sure if she had any sort of TMR equipped there. As the Keen Blade comes out from Zazan to try and get that slash tack up on all three units. Going to be very useful. The re-raise finishes for Mashri in Prayer of Resolute Oaths for the Sylvie. Spirit debuff resistance as well as some spirit to boot. Going to be effective against that Queen Mashri as the Bravery gets dropped. And a little bit of chunk of damage coming out from the Lucio. But nothing drastic here as the Raging Waters is online for the Perrine. 
We'll have to see if Queen Mashri can return some damage here. Zazan is not in range to get anything done. He is out of buffs, so he's not going to go for anything here. Bunny's protection on the Sylvie. She now has re-raise. She is shell. And I'm just curious to see how many buffs she has online. If she'll be able to walk forward. Sometimes she gets caught in the back. But the Shadow Devourer coming up from Liarte for 3k damage. Also landing the poison. Meteor, does it finish off Zazan? It doesn't. He actually has terrible magic resist. But maybe Jesus prepping for that. The Royal Reprehension or whatever it's called. The counter coming from Queen Mashri does a little bit of damage. But she's going to drop to Lucio. However, her re-raise does give her about half of her health bar back. What can Perrin get done? She finds the Vortex Kick on Zazan, but she apparently can't find the angle on Lucio. Interesting. It must be a height range thing here. As Sylvie's going to return some damage onto the Perrin, Queen Mashri now has her opportunity. And how much can she get done? This is the Queen's Gambit. Going to drop the Earth Attack Resistance on the Sylvie in the back. Can she find a kill here or something close? 4389 is about half of her health bar. Sylvie does still have her Limit Break ready to go, which is a massive heal. Will she get the opportunity to use it? Radiant Nova from Lucio. Kind of popping off here killing the liarte and here comes perine with 64 ap she can do a ton of damage subjugating fist is going to do a ton of damage that re-raise still is there for sylvie though she's going to come back to life she should go for her limit break here and she is going to do that it's not going to be on the lucio it's just going to be on herself but she will have a full health bar with a one hit shield to boot here and ap auto restore is going to help her out quite a bit as well queen mashri can she find a kill or damage again. She did about half the health last time. That one hit barrier. I'm not sure if Glimmer of Conviction breaks barriers or not. But here comes Lucio with the limit break. Based on who was highlighted on the map. I think this only hits Perrine. But I'm not sure. It only hits Perrine. 6,000 damage. The heal back is going to give a lot of that back here. And who's up next? It should be Sylvie. Can she find a kill on either one? Yes, she can. The Brave Breaker is a huge light slash chain. And this is looking pretty good for Jesus in game one here. Queen Mashri, though, should be able to kill Sylvie. And it would be a 1v1 after that. She's going to do so. Comet does 3k damage. Lucio is going to follow up with a Crescentic Break, though. And she cannot withstand the damage. And Jesus puts himself on game point in this series. Game number two here, Jesus LBL entered the week in ninth place, but if he wins this game, he will make the playoffs. But if Alcor has anything to say about it, Dawn will be in that spot. Auto Mills Crux comes out from the Edward Elric, switching up the team on Jesus LBL's side. And interestingly enough, Elcourt does not switch their team. So we'll see how this works. The double win unit is going to be pretty effective against Queen Mashri, though, as the Greater Domain of Water comes out from the Perrine. Queen Mashri, I expect to go re-raise again. Actually, no, it's the Queen's Edict, so protect on both members. Magic attack up as well. And Alcor is still not having any sort of buffs turned on for the Liarte, so I'm curious if maybe it's like a weapon TMR or something like that, but she's not using any sort of buffs. Wallbreaker comes out from Edward Elric, though, and just obliterates Liarte before she can get any statuses online. And the Unyielding stance for the Tifa, she's got Courage up. This is going to be pretty tough for Alcor in a 3v2. But I would never count a Perrine out. She is an absolute monster. Raging Waters comes out. Ravis is going to go next with the Immortal Spirit. She's got Curid online. Status nullifications. Queen Mashri, how much damage can you do to the Lightning Tank? This is the Queen's Gambit. I expect her Lightning or Earth Resist is going to be pretty damn low after this limit break goes off. 8657 is a lot, considering the fact that Ravis has a ton of AoE resistance in her kit. But here comes the Full Metal Rage coming out from the Edward Elric. I expect to do this a shitload of damage. 8300, is it enough to one shot? It is not. Queen Mashri barely hangs on, still has a re-raise. So this Whirling Uppercut combo does about 12k after the Wind Fist Chain. I'm sorry, she did not re-raise. That was game one. She didn't re-raise this time. She went for the Queen's Edict instead. Oh my gosh. Whirling Vortex comes out from the Perrine, though. AoE damage onto both Ravis and Tifa. Edward barely does any damage at all to Perrine there. Wow. Steelheart comes out from Ravis. The Charm does not land. And hold on a second, guys. Perrine goes enough of this, gets the counter. And Somersault Combo comes out. If this stun doesn't land, Perrine might legitimately 3v1. 7,400 damage is a ton, though, and the stun does land. And Tifa, the savior of Jesus LBL's team here, landing that crucial stun. And it's not only just a stun, but it is a two-turn stun, which is just ridiculous. Edward can't get in range to do damage. He goes Auto Mail's Crux again, but Tifa is just pounding this Perrine here. 4,200 damage. He will finally become unstunned. Ravis goes for the Steelheart and lands the charm. And that means Perrine can't follow up. She would probably land a double kill here if she was able to hit, but she cannot do so. 
Edward's gonna have AP this time. Full Metal Fist comes out. That is the kill. And Jesus LBL of the Straw Hats, would you believe it, started the week in ninth place, finishes the series with a 2-0 victory, and claims the Rundall fifth, speed, fifth seed. Congratulations, GG. All right, guys, with the regular season all wrapped up, this is how the Rundall division fleshes out at the end of it. Of course, we have Surf Taco, Coach of Reagan against the Machine. Perfect 9-0-0 series record with 27 points, plus 17 plus or minus for their game win loss. Only dropped one game in nine series. That is honestly just ridiculously incredible. We said at the start of the season how good his team roster was, but he might be an even better player piloting that team. So just incredibly impressive. We've only ever had one other time where somebody went undefeated through the regular season. That was last week or last season, excuse me, with McCrane. Um, but man, this is just utter domination throughout the season. So very, very impressive. Honestly, also very impressive. Ready Player Will of the Pandas with 24 points. Obviously, everybody knows who he is. Um, go check out his YouTube channel. Awesome guy with a lot of brains and a lot of awesome stuff going on. But 24 points in his debut in the WDL is incredibly impressive. Looking forward to seeing him in the playoffs. And Coppola of Holy Divers. Um, anybody who knows the PvP scene knows this guy. He's an incredible uh, auto and manual player. 21 points, 720 series record. All three of these teams have been just really, really dominant. They only took games off each other, and that should just say how good they were all season. Now, those three teams are going to be in the playoffs and will have a first round bye. These next two teams, though, made the playoffs in the final week, so congratulations to both of them, Catra of Sandrock and Jesus LBL of the Straw Hats. These two teams won when it counted in the final week. Um, Jesus LBL having the tiebreaker over Dawn week one. They played against each other and Jesus LBL won that series. So crazy to think that all the way back into week one was the reason that Jesus gets this tiebreaker, but that is the case. And so he becomes our fifth seed, went from ninth to fifth this week. Incredibly impressive. He is an awesome guy and I'm excited for him. Heartbreak for Dawn, unfortunate that they didn't make it, but uh, regardless, was very happy to see them play this season. Thunder Major Shadow Wizard Money Gang, another member of my guild. Heartbroken that he didn't make it either, but honestly, a really fun season to watch for him. He won four different times, so by no means was he a slouch. Koryu87 of season, Alcor of Diminishing Returns with 11 and 10 points respectively, also doing really well all season. I mean, there were just so many teams who were just really, really competitive all season, and it was a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Iceheart or Sweetheart of Stag Party unfortunately didn't get a series win. I think the team roster may be just a little too heavy on the missile side of things, because I know she as a player is a fantastic player. I know from too many people how good she is at this game that I think it really came down more to roster than anything. So regardless, this division was a lot of fun to watch. Um, excited for all five of these teams to be in the playoffs. After all four videos come out this week, I am going to show a picture of whatever the playoff bracket looks like, and I will go over that, but I'm not going to do that yet because there's three other videos to, for me to cast and to talk about and all that kind of stuff. So regardless, this season, this division was absolutely nuts. Had a blast watching and casting it, and I'm looking forward to seeing how these teams do in the playoffs. So thank you guys so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.